need to keep looking more up into the camera. <laughs> you're doing great. No, 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 don't change a thing. You're doing great. So let's take a look at these pieces here. Is it obvious which one has the highest value? We're gonna chat about the quality factors of jade from fun to fine, how much jade costs, and the correct use of jade quality terms such as commercial, apple, and imperial. Chris, what are we looking at here? Clearly one has a little, has more color and probably is a little more valuable. However, the other is beautiful. It's beautifully carved, it might tell a story. So the one on the left, is a lighter green, but it has a nice creamy quality to it. It looks like a, it's a beautiful carving. So I wouldn't necessarily refer to this as commercial. Commercial may not be as smooth a material. It might have a little more modeling, so a little more cloudiness in it. Not expensive. Not all jade has to be expensive. And that's why you and I talk about fun to find because it's all fun and fabulous, really. The piece on the right that you're showing has beautiful color. It's much more saturated color. We probably wouldn't refer to that as imperial, but it's a fine apple, a fine medium to darker apple. And it just has lovely color. It's rather even for nice, strong color. We look, we always look for even color. Even if it's light, we still want it to be even. And that really adds to the value of a piece, even if it's not extremely expensive. So would we call this commercial? So this is a great piece. So I'm holding it as well. So the parts that are lighter, when I'm looking at it, the parts that are lighter, really, it is a little more commercial. The base of it would be a little more commercial quality. However, it has these fabulous, vivid green streaks in it. It makes it really exciting. There are a lot of pieces that are commercial that are fabulous. You might have a commercial bangle, but it's still it's still cut. It's still beautiful. Um, it's still smooth. It should jade should always feel good. Um, but it might have a little more modeling. It might be a little drier material, and therefore we might refer to it more as commercial. It has a little dryness to it, and therefore wearing it, having it against your skin, and touching it and feeling it will keep it healthy and keep the polish healthy, and therefore it'll look even be more beautiful as you wear it. So the color won't improve necessarily, but the polish could, and therefore the color could become a little more vivid from the oils in your hand and in your skin. Definitely a piece that needs to be worn and definitely a fun piece. You don't have to spend a million dollars. It doesn't have to be imperial to really be fabulous and to be worn. Here we can see that piece with the, the bright green modeling kind of compared to other, would you call these bees? Are they technically bees? Yes, would be referred to as a B disc pendant. Which one is um, like the best? Yeah. Like of these four, which one's the best quality? I would probably say the two on either end. B, that is the second from the left. That's kind of a watery color. Would you call that water jade? Does that qualify? You know what? I, I wouldn't even maybe refer to it as water. I think it's too icy. It's really... It's really an icy green. It's just very translucent. I would say it's really ice with green. And you can read through that one. This you could read through. You really could read through it. Translucent pieces. So pieces that are translucent, it means the structure, jade has a granular structure, and it means that the structure is even tighter, like a diamond. The tighter the structure, the fewer impurities. Well, the same with jade. So the tighter the structure, then the impurities sort of are worked out and the struck and the it becomes more translucent the tighter the structure. It's even more durable than a modeled piece of jade. Even though jade is so crazy durable to begin with, the translucent jade is even a little more durable and so gorgeous. And against the skin, it just glows. This piece here is a very popular style in jade. It's a great color, but still really inexpensive and attainable. And it's a natural looking color, right? You would probably never see treated jade that looks like this. Correct. The only time we would see treated jade that might look like that is only if they have bleached out the impurities to look like that. That doesn't necessarily look like they've added any dye because it has a nice light, even color. It's nothing shocking or surprising. It's just a really pretty natural color, but we do test anyway because it could be they could have bleached out impurities some iron staining or that type of thing. So we still do test because they still might might treat a piece to eat, uh, like that. And for everybody who's watching, Mason K only sells natural, meaning untreated A jade, which is jadeite jade that has not been dyed, not been impregnated with polymer, not been bleached. Anything you get from Mason K, it came out of the ground, that color. So this is the same ring we were just looking at. Can you talk a little bit about this quality jump here? I mean, I don't think anybody would argue that the, the solitaire is a 
more valuable, a better, right? A better quality of jade than the carving. It would be, and they would both be very safe to be worn every day. Jade is durable. The one on the right is a finer quality. It has a little fine, you know, the color is definitely finer. It's also cabochon as compared to carved. And then it's so funny, you put this marquee in next to it. And <laughs> even though that middle, that, you know, that apple green solitaire is still really, really gorgeous. It's, you can't, you shouldn't look at it next to the marquee because that, that color right. on that marquee is just incredible. How would you describe that? I think a lot of people are going to ask, is that imperial? So that's close to imperial. That's heading towards imperial. This stone is translucent. It does have translucency. Um, it's, it's, it's close in color to imperial. The color needs to be maybe slightly darker a little, little stronger, and we need a little higher translucency. So there's definitely, there's a huge range between these three totally unique pieces, um, and they each cater to a different budget, but all still beautiful, definitely in their own way. I think it's a good time to kind of mention too that the three main factors that we look at when we're evaluating the quality of a piece of jade are color, obviously, translucency, and texture. This apple green solitaire, when you when you zoom in really close, you can see kind of a texture to it, right? It's not yeah. super, super solid. Correct. It's not super uniform in color. So that's probably a good example. Can you talk a little bit about what we mean when we say texture in jade? Absolutely, absolutely, and those are that's a gr those are perfect examples because um, the apple green stone faces up beautifully. It's a beautiful, vivid green color. It's relatively even, as you said, and actually in person you can tell more. There's actually a darker area on it, but it doesn't necessarily have the light modeling. But in terms of texture, you'll notice that the ring next to it, even though not maybe as vivid a color it has much more translucency. Mm -hmm. And therefore it's got a little, it's got a glow to it. Whereas this stone, a beautiful apple green stone, gorgeous. I, again, I would say that it is not highly translucent. I would say that it has some translucency as that, that there is light that does transfer through it, um, but it doesn't quite have the glow of the other piece. Which stone would be more valuable? Because on one hand you have the more textured, more opaque stone, but it's a better color. Does that yes. make the difference in the value? So in this case, the stone, um, the stone on the right that has much more muted color, um, really, if it had no translucency, would be much less valuable. But because it has translucency and really nice translucency that gives the stone a really beautiful glow, it's much closer in value to the apple green stone. However, the apple green stone, because of its beautiful, vivid color, is still going to be uh, more valuable. So all three... All three factors really have to be taken into consideration. Like there's not even Absolutely. really one that's going to be so much more powerful than the others. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's why even fun pieces that aren't fine can still have translucency. It doesn't yes. have to be super, super fine. People think, oh, I say translucency. Oh, it's going to be too expensive. Not always. Mm -hmm. Not always. And if you're really looking for something translucent, there's always something that we can find. We, you know, there's watery jade and icy jade. There, you know, there are translucent pieces that that we can find that aren't very fine and expensive. So this is a carving, Chris. This is a nice piece, very beautiful natural yes. jade carving. Would you call this yes. apple green in that top right corner, kind of on the raised so I, part of the carving? I would. I would call. We would call this a light apple green. Light Absolutely. apple. Light apple. And I'm holding it here. And, Light apple, and even in my photo, I think I mean in my hand, the piece has maybe a little more color than than your photo. Jade is very, very hard to photograph. It's really relatively even, except for on a few of those mountains you can see up there on the right top, where it's even a little more vivid. And that helps really it. Does adds, that? Yes, that adds does. to the value. It does. These carvers are amazing, and they always take into account, you know, all the different levels of different colors in the carvings, and always use it to the best of their ability. And this this would actually only sell for around sixteen hundred or so. Not too shabby for one of the toughest, one of the rarest gems. So we've introduced this carving of the two rats. How would you describe that color? Is that technically water jade? So this I would definitely refer to as it's it's water it's water jade. So and and you know if you see the piece in person, you would agree with me. Everybody would because it it looks watery. It really does. It almost looks like just a still moment of water. And water jade, is that typically going to be a little bit more affordable than green? 
It certainly can be. It, it would be, you know, it's it's in the same vein of icy green, uh, but the watery has little different coloring to it. Might not be as clearly green. It's a little muddier, or it's a little lighter, or it's got little streaks in it. This kind of goes from. It's kind of a. I mean, it it's a light icy. It's got icy green to it, but it's really very watery. Let's start talking about. Let's start talking about some upper apple. Getting into some finer colors. So this is not imperial, but it's correct. still beautiful. You you would call this apple green, correct? Absolutely. That would be a medium apple green cabochon. Some customers prefer a nice bright apple, but some are looking for a more medium, uh, medium to darker apple green, which is what I would call that. Mm -hmm. um, even you're going to start heading towards, you know, that's when you're heading towards the imperial, where you're looking for really fine, rich even color with translucency. And none of these are imperial. So green is not imperial. That's something I really want people to understand is just because it's yes. green doesn't mean it's imperial. Technically, none of these are imperial. But if you start at Correct. the bottom and work your way up, it does increase in quality. And you can kind of see the richness of that green increase. Yes. Um, yeah, and that again, shows the fun to find. Yeah, Definitely from, fun to find. From fun it's to all find. fabulous. As it we is. say, all of the jade is fabulous. It really, it's just a matter of what you're looking for and what you want to wear. Okay, so here, this is a question that I genuinely have because having seen these pieces in person, I would say that they yes. do have a little bit of a different presence in person than they do on camera. Um, yes. Does the estate piece here have a higher quality piece of jade than the bezel set? It does. It's hard to tell. And as we discussed, yes, you know, often, as we say, really jade should be seen in person, um, especially fine jade. The piece, So the estate piece with the diamonds is actually much closer to imperial. In person, it has a glow. It has much higher translucency. It's a finer piece of jade and the, the green is, is even richer. So this is one that I think you told me one time looks kind of like omphacite. It's a little bit of a grayer green, but really juicy and really translucent. When you when you put it next to the Marquis Solitaire, I think it dulls it a little bit. But on its exactly. own, don't you think that's a gorgeous stone? It's a gorgeous stone. It's a great ring. We might refer, it's just slightly off color, but it's a beautiful color. Mm -hmm. It's off color compared to imperial, but it's a beautiful color. You can see how even it is and you can see the glow because it's translucent. Something that we haven't really discussed yet is what is imperial? What is the meaning of imperial? And is that a gemological term or is that just a trade term? So imperial is one of those terms that everybody uses like deflawless, but deflawless, we all know what that means. We know that that's, you know, a, a diamond that has the, you know, the finest color and has no flaws. It's really kind of what imperial jade is. People use the word imperial. It really just means the finest of the fine, um, super fine, mega fine. It's, you know, really gorgeous. And obviously the imperial court, uh, was the first to find it and they were the first to keep it and hold on to it. Uh, so Imperial really is fine, finest of the fine. Um, and there's a huge a range of Imperial, right? So you can have Imperial yes. that's only $50,000, but you can also right. have Imperial that's 27 million. Absolutely. That's very, very true. Is it Imperial in color? Is it Imperial in translucency? It's just a term that's used. I do not think that it is a gemological term. It's a trade term. It's just a term that everyone hears. And often people think that all jade is imperial jade. So we hate to disappoint people. And we don't want to say that your jade that you own isn't imperial. Um, it's imperial to you. But in terms of, of fine, imperial jade is really just the finest of the fine. We love all of our pieces. Not all of them have to be fine for us to really think they're beautiful. Really, you know, we buy very carefully. We choose very carefully. We design very carefully. And so all of our pieces are loved. All of our pieces all of our pieces, they're fine to me. Um, they just not may not be fine um, in price, but we try to really design beautiful things. We want to make sure that everybody can have a piece of jade. And, you know, from fun to fine, it really is fabulous. 